You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Hello, RCF family. Thank you for joining me for our weekly podcast. I'm Dave Gaphart. <clears throat> Happy Tuesday to you. We're going to start in Genesis chapter 26. So if you have your Bible and you'd like to follow along, Genesis chapter 26, it talks about that there is a famine in the land. Um, the uh, title for today's teaching is Recession Proofing Your Prosperity. Recession Proofing Your Prosperity prosperity. And in Genesis 26, we see that there was famine in the land. You guys know the scripture. In verse 12, it says that Isaac planted crops in that land in the same year. He reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. And the King James says, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Uh, let's begin with prayer real quick. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, for the revelations, for the insights that come as we study your word, as we glean through the truths. God, we thank you, Lord, that your word doesn't return void. Your word is relevant, it's alive, it's powerful, and it's working for us on our behalf now in this time, just as it did in the time when it was written. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, Isaac sowed in that land. So now normally, typically, when I, when I read this scripture, I think giving financially but the, uh, the revelation came, this was a couple days ago, I kind of got this download. So I'm going to share this with you. I had written down a couple different points that, had, had, uh, that the Holy Ghost just started kind of uh, flowing to me. And so I was writing this down. And he said, you're thinking financially sowing. But when Isaac, when it says Isaac sowed in that land, Isaac sowed, I mean, he actually went out and he put his hand to the work. So in a time when nothing was producing, he didn't just sit idly by complaining about the famine, complaining about the lack of production, complaining about the recession, agreeing with the report that was being said. But he literally went out, he put his hand to the plow, he was working the land, he would, he would have invested money to purchase the seed, to sow seed into that soil. He would have been paying his workers for their labor. So he was expending finances. He was expending energy. He was, he was laboring. He was releasing resources. And then he was believing and trusting that God would do what he said he would do. So it's important that it, when we look at just the concept of Isaac sowed in that land, for me personally, I always think of like, oh yeah, giving. So let's sow a seed. Let's give financially. Let's be a blessing to somebody and then believe God to return that seed to us. But what the Holy Ghost was showing me was like Isaac literally went out, started sweating, started spending, started putting, putting his hand to the plow to actually do this work. And that work produced for him. And not in that moment. They would have put the seed in the ground in a time of famine. They would have been looking at the dry ground. They would have been looking at all the impossibilities. Did we just expend all this energy, effort, money to get the seed in the ground? And now it's not going to produce for us. But Isaac trusted God. His faith was in God, in what God had said, and God blessed him for it. Now, notice that God did what God said he would do. Now, God, his word doesn't change when the circumstances say no. His word is true and his word is trustworthy. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, All the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen. So all the promises of God are yes and amen. And it's not according to what the circumstances are saying. It's not according to what the reports are saying or what the news is saying or what your neighbors saying or what your friends are saying. You know, people are going to come out and they're, gonna, they're always going to project negativity. They're always going to have a bad, evil report. So whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe their report? Are you going to believe that you're going personally into a time of, of recession? <clears throat> or are you going to trust God? And are you going to say, no, 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 all the promises of God are yes and amen, regardless of the circumstances. Psalms 119, 89 says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now, when you think about the concept of heaven versus the earth, when we consider we're ambassadors here on the earth, so this world is not our home. Our home is in heaven and we're operating, we're living here and functioning as ambassadors here on the earth. 
And so when we look at our the blessing that's upon us isn't isn't predicated upon the earth and its circumstances. It's based upon heaven, where God's word is forever settled. Psalms 138.2, it says, I will worship to get uh, toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So when we look at the circumstances and we look at what's going on in the earth, what's happening here in our, in our lives is going to be based upon what we're allowing to happen in our lives. And a lot of people don't like that. They want to talk about the sovereignty of God. And they want to say, well, God and his sovereignty, you know, this is happening. God is sovereign. So when bad things happen, that's how they justify, well, God's sovereign and God has a plan and, and, and God's going to work his sovereign higher plan in your life through these hardships. Well, yeah, God has a plan. His plan is to prosper you and to give you a future and to give you a hope. His plan, it's a good plan, and it's not for evil. So when there's evil things, when there's bad things, when there's bad reports, when there's, there's things that are contrary to what the promises of God say for your life, that's not God's plan. So you can stand against that. You can take authority over those circumstances. You can say, not in my life. You need to agree with the word of God. You need to be having coming up out of your heart and out of your mouth what God says. What are his promises? When someone says, we're going into a time of recession, you should be saying, not me, not my family, not my paycheck, not my bank account. You should be answering those. You should be speaking to those words that are being spoken over you, and you need to be bringing those those the 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 thoughts not to agree with those but you need to bring your thoughts into agreement to align with the word of god god is sovereign but he's his sovereignty is his word so he won't alter his word the sovereignty of god we see in psalms 138 2 is that he has magnified his word above his name so the sovereignty of god is seen in the word of god and so if you want god to be sovereign in your life let the word of God work in your life. Agree with the word of God in your life. That's the sovereignty of God. His sovereignty is in his word. And his word, he's magnified above his name. His word, he won't alter. He won't change the thing that's come out of his mouth. So if he promised to bless you, and in a time of famine, you go out and you sow seed in the ground because you know that God has promised to bless the work of your hands, he's not going to alter the word that's come out of his mouth. He's not going to alter his word and say, well, I was going to bless the work of your hands, but because there's a recession coming, I can't bless the work of your hands. No, no, no. God's word is forever settled in heaven. So just agree with what the word of God says for you and step out and do what God has instructed you to do. His word won't alter because of bad circumstances. He's not going to change what's coming out of his mouth because the world disagrees with it. Psalms 103 verse 5, it says, He satisfies your mouth with good things, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, when we look at Deuteronomy 28, you might just want to meditate on these first 13 verses of Deuteronomy 28, maybe daily, a couple times a day. Well, I'm going to read through this because I want, I want, there's answers to the world's problems. There's answers to the world's bad reports in Deuteronomy 28 for you. And it says, It shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So notice you're not hearkening, you're not listening intently to the bad reports, to the reports of the day and the time and of the news. And you're hearkening diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So it's important what you're allowing to, to come in front of your face while you're watching all the, the social media feeds and you're watching the news and you're hearing all these reports from your employee. Are you hearkening diligently unto those voices or are you hearkening diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God? Put this in front of you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28. To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. So be a doer of the word. Live right. Do right that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. You know, it's so important how you live. It's so important how you behave. It's so important how you treat others. It's so important uh, following the voice of the Spirit and not following the, the unctions and the lures and the desires of the flesh. It's so important how you live. Because when you live right, when you do right, when you observe and do all of the commandments, these are the promises. 
The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. So notice, the blessings are coming on thee and they're overtaking you. It, in a time of recession, there should be a very clear distinction between who are the Christians, who are the believers, who are the ones who actually live according to the Word of God, what are the results of their lifestyle, and what are the results of those who are just living carnal lives. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. In a time of recession, the blessings of the Lord should be coming on thee and overtaking thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So notice, it's, it's conditional. Are you going to hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God? Are you going to do the word? Are you going to listen to what the word of God says and do the word in its entirety, in its fullness? Are you going to listen to the Holy Ghost and follow the instructions and those things that he's placing on your heart? You know, the Holy Ghost should be so loud coming up out of your spirit. You know, people talk about the still small voice of the Lord, and that's correct. But when we're looking at living a life where we have the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, who's our comforter, yes, but he's also our teacher. He's also our, our standby. He's also there as our advocate. He's also there as our counselor. The Holy Ghost is on the inside of us. His voice to us, leading us and guiding us, should be so loud. It should be so clear. And if it's not, we just have to tap into that by praying in tongues. Get yourself built up on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. That's Jude 20. That's New Testament. Get in the Holy Ghost. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Any chance you get, get yourself praying in the Holy Ghost and built up so that you're hearing the voice of the Spirit of God so loudly, so much louder than all the circumstances, all the negativity, all the bad reports, all the complaining. You should be hearing the voice of the counselor instructing you on what to do. That should be so loud. Hearkening unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Verse 3, blessed shalt thou be in the city, blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of the ground, the fruit of the cattle, the increase of thy kin, the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket in thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. That means in every arena of your life, in every aspect, it's just blessing, 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 blessing. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thee, before thy face. I read that wrong. Let me read verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and thou shalt flee before thee seven ways. You know, you don't have to fight your own battles. When people come up against you, when words are spoken against you, when, when people scheme and try to maneuver in the background to try to take advantage of you, you don't have to fight them. The Lord will cause your enemies to flee before these seven ways. He will take care of it. Don't try to fight your own battles. Stay in peace. Stay in right living. Keep a positive attitude. Walk in love. And let the Lord fight your enemies for you. He's much better at doing it. And you'll come out shining. The Lord, verse 8, shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So look at that in the storehouse. That means you have more than enough. You've got storehouses. You've got a full supply. And in all that you set your hand onto. Now, the Holy Ghost is, is, he's really good at leading and directing you in what you should be setting your hand onto. One of the things we're going to look at is that you have to set your hand to stuff. This isn't a time to recoil and to step back and to hide. This is a time to press forward. This is a time to push forward and to get your hand working on stuff. Not just anything, but get your hand working on what the Holy Ghost is instructing you to do. He'll bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. So notice, it's God who has established this. It's God who has sworn these things. It's God who is looking to establish thee a holy people unto himself. Like, this isn't something that God is, is, is not wanting to do or something that he loathes having to do. Oh, I've got to bless my people. No, he, he desires to do this because he's a good father. And he desires to do this because he promised and because he gave his word and because he established a covenant with our father Abraham and he swore it by himself. So the covenant that we're walking in, the blessing of the Abraham, that is to us as New Testament believers, 
those that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. How good did God take care of Abraham? How good did God take care of Isaac? How good can God take care of you if you'll just do the word and walk in his ways? Verse 10, And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Why? Because they see a difference. Because they're going through struggle. They're going through recession. But they see there's something about you. Why aren't you struggling? We work at the same place. We have the same job. We have the same employer. Why is it recession affecting your house? Well, because it's not just that you are an employee for a such and such company. You're the blessed child of God. All the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord thy God, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of the ground, and the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in a season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. You shall be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if thou shalt hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So notice, there's qualifications. If a Christian would just do the word, the Christian will get word results. And the word results are blessing. It's putting you above. You're the head and you're not the tail. You're not getting run over or pushed down or getting pushed back or getting looked over. No, you're the head. You're out in front. The blessing is overtaking you. He's blessing all the work of your hands. So this is all based upon conditional, conditional behavior, conditional response. Are you a doer of the word or are you a hearer only? Are you a doer of the word or are you... A sometimes doer. <laughs> What's the priority? And we're not doing these things just to get stuff. We're not doing, we're not doing the word just so we can get blessed. We are blessed. But we more than that, we want to please God with our lives. But notice that God <clears throat> bless. He promises to bless the work of your hands. Then go give him something to work with. It is unscriptural to sit at home on your couch and expect God to bless the work of your hands. He says, bless the work of your hands. Put the energy in. This is what, what he was showing me with in, in Genesis 26, where he's showing that Isaac went out and actually did. He went out and actually started. He sowed that seed. He had to put forth the energy. And when he put the energy in to produce, God is there to ensure that the increase comes, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what the world's economy is doing. God's economy is always blessing. God's economy is always production. It's always increase and it's always multiplication. When others are retracting, that's not you. <clears throat> you will multiply when others are retracting. That's the blessing. Isaac produced a hundredfold return. In a time of recession, your production can multiply well beyond natural results. So in the natural, Isaac shouldn't have produced anything. In the natural, the famine would have swallowed up that seed. It would have choked it out. The seed would have been a waste of money, all that labor, all that toil, that all would have been for naught. But the blessing supersedes the natural. Your production can multiply well beyond natural results. The time it takes to reach the next level can expedite quicker than by doing it according to the smartest minds in the industry. This is where you start to come out, where people are like, wow, this is when, when all the earth sees that you're blessed, they're seeing you do things, but then they're seeing it produce well beyond the natural results. They're seeing stuff speed up, where they're like, that should have taken a lot longer, but it's, it's producing and it's increasing quicker than what normally would happen in the industry. That's the blessing. The blessing isn't restricted by anything more than what you're going to say and what you're going to believe. When Jesus fed the 5,000, notice it took action. The disciples, they just started. When Jesus broke the bread, he said, give it to them to eat. Notice the disciples, they just started. That's half the stuff that Christians are missing is that they're just not starting. They're just not moving. They're not taking that first step in what the Holy Ghost is instructing them to do. And they're never stepping out. You've got to step out of the boat to see the miracle happen. When the disciples just started, that's when the multiplication began to take place. Just start. 
This isn't a time to recoil. It's not a time to back up just because people are saying things aren't going to look good. No, no, no. Things still look good. Everything is good for the Christian. It's a good, God has, has a desire, a, a plan for you that is good. When things don't look good, you go, God's plan for me, it's good. Your breakthrough is in your breaking through when everyone else is sitting down. Notice breakthrough. That's a concept of, if you think about someone coming through like, coming through a wall or coming through a glass window, like they're breaking through. That takes action. That takes, that takes energy. That takes effort. Breakthrough takes breaking through. It, it's, it's a corresponding action. The multiplication came through the disciples who were doing the work. It didn't come through the ones who were sitting down. The ones sitting down, they did benefit. The 5,000, you know, how, it'd take a while to get through 5,000 people. That's plus women and children. You're, you're talking about a lot of time. But the, the multiplication came through the ones, through the disciples who were doing the work. It came through God, but it, 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 does that make sense? Like they were the vessels that were able to carry that multiplication. It didn't come through the ones who were just sitting down. The ones who were sitting down, they benefited, but they benefited because of the ones who were taking action. When lack stares you in the face, just take action. When lack stares you in the face, Take action. Just start doing the first step that you know the Holy Ghost is instructing you to do because the multiplication comes in the action. It comes in the doing. It's the doing of the word that causes the blessing to come. It's not just hearing the word and being like, man, that's a really good word. But then you don't do what the Holy Ghost is placing on your heart to do. Isaac sowed in that land. He took action. So we've got to change how we're thinking. We've got, to, we've got to get to the place where we're not just allowing what the world is saying and what our coworkers are saying, what our, even our friends. I, I've, I've talked with you know, people I would consider like good colleagues that I can get good advice from. And even this week, they're like, man, this recession is going to be brutal the next two years. And they said that. I'm like, for you, maybe not for me. Like, this is not a time for you to agree with the world. This is a time for you to agree with the word. The word says you're blessed. You, you, you can't afford to not live a blessed life. You can't afford to not tap into the potential that God has placed in you. Now's the time to rise up and to start. It's not the time to sit down and try to benefit from people who are handing out stuff. Your think needs to grow. Like the mentality needs to grow. The, the, the concept of who you are and what you can do through the blessing that's upon you, that needs to grow and expand on the inside of you. The vision and the revelation of who you are in Christ, that needs to grow. The way that grows is through meditating upon the word, not through listening to what the world says. Meditating on the word. Get into this Deuteronomy 28. Just start to meditate upon this verse 1 through 13. There's something in here that your heart will be able to grab every day. And then you'll be able to grab that thing and just feed on that thing and feed on that thing and feed on that thing. Maybe as you're reading through, you say, well, he'll bless the work of my hands. Well, I'm going to go put my hands to work. I'm going to go put my hands to something because there's something that he's given me to do and God will bless the work of your hands. And then maybe the next day you you read it and you're like, well, the blessed will be the fruit of my body. Like, I'm not going to keep saying like, well, I'm this age and so now I have all these problems. No, don't say that. Because the word doesn't say that blessed will be the fruit of your body until you hit this certain age. And when you hit that certain age, well, then your body starts to go into decline. It says blessed will be the fruit of your body. You remember Caleb, he stood up, he said, like, I'm like 80 years old. Give me this mountain. I'm just as strong now as I was 40 years ago. So there shouldn't be a decline in your body just because of a number of how many birthdays you've had. The fruit of your body... <clears throat> The, the sustaining power of God upon your physical body. We just read that he puts good things in the mouth and he, re, he, he regenerates. Well, now I'm going to go read it. Maybe this will help somebody. He says he satisfies. Psalms 103 verse 5. He satisfies thy mouth with good things so your youth is renewed like the eagle. Just because you hit a certain birth date, that doesn't mean it's time to stop pro. pro, pro professing over yourself, confessing over yourself, my youth is renewed like the eagles. That's the best skin firming cream you could ever find. My youth is renewed like the eagles. So our think needs to grow. The revelation of who we are in Christ, of what we have, 
of what we can do. This needs to expand. You need to see your life as, as, as uh, uh, there are no impossibilities. Everything in your life is possible because of God. Everything is possible because of the power of God and because of the blessing of God. There's nothing that the devil can do. There's nothing that the devil can, can do to stop the production in your life. There's nothing the devil can do to stop the blessing in your life. There's nothing he can do to stop the favor that he can do to stop the increase. The devil is a defeated foe. Jesus came, I was reflecting this morning as we were preparing for communion, on the revelation that Peter had was that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God in your life. Jesus is the Messiah. He came to give you life in abundance to the full till it overflows. And what he said, he told Peter, upon this revelation that I'm the Christ, the gates of hell shall not prevail. The devil can't stop what God has placed in you. The devil can't stop the potential that's in you. You're the only one that can do that. So if you don't reach your full potential, that's your responsibility. It, the, the responsibility lies upon you. You're, 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 you're obligated <laughs> to reach the potential that you can rise to, the potential that God has called you to. It's higher, it's greater, and it's better than the small glimpse of the vision that you can actually hold. God's plan for your life is far greater, far better than anything that you could ever think, ask, or imagine. In the way that you obtain that, the way that you, you, you walk in that, and that becomes a reality in your life, is through doing the word, is through believing the word, and it's through speaking the word. So I hope this was an encouragement to you. Remember, the supply is in the earth. The grace and power and the favor that comes from heaven is able to move that supply into your hands. This is the way we're going to get through this recession. This is how you recession-proof your prosperity. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Be blessed.